This is a rear axle from a 1962 AMC Rambler wagon. Now that it's out of the car, it's gonna stay out. My name's Eric and this is Dirty Elbows Garage. You can't exactly miss it. I've had this vehicle in the background of a bunch of videos that we've had on the channel so far. It's time that we introduce it. It's time that we actually kick off this project. I'm gonna save a full introduction of why we're building this car and things like that for a later video. But for now, just know that it's a 1962 AMC Rambler wagon. And it's a pretty unique project. The more I'm finding out about, the more it surprises me as we go. Okay, so one of the first surprises that I found out when we were picking up the project, it didn't use an open driveline design, it used an enclosed driveline design with a more of a torque tube uh, setup. So when it came time to upgrade that, I looked at some of the options. You can kind of convert it to an open drive line and use a more modern axle. You can retrofit the other one, or you can go completely off the reservation and go full independent rear suspension, which is what we're doing. One of the things to note about this vehicle is that it's not a body on frame design. It's actually a unibody, and there's this really cool plaque, I'll probably cut to it here, that kind of signifies how cool they thought unibodies were back in the day. Unibodies typically have a much more organic shape to them which make them a lot harder to measure. And the first step in designing my independent rear suspension for this vehicle is capturing that geometry so I can come up with a subframe and my control arm setup for the rear of the vehicle. And to capture that geometry, I'm pulling out the 3D scanner so we can get started doing that right now. Okay, so the rear of the Rambler is done being scanned. Next up is a differential. So this is a limited slip differential out of a 2006 Pontiac GTO. Uh, I need to make sure that I pick up my mounting geometry, my input shaft and my output flanges, as well as make sure it fits in the housing that I'm going to be designing for it as well. So it's a good thing that 3D scan, it's got a lot of odd shapes on it. So let me get my markers on it and then straight to 3D scanning. Okay, 3D scanning is done. Let's jump straight into CAD and see how everything came out. I wanna go over three different files before I put everything together and, and uh, show you what I'm doing with all this geometry that we just scanned. So the first one up is the rear cavity, I guess you could call it. This is where the rear axle was, and it's a little bit tricky to make out, especially with the splotchy stuff from the inside of the upper wheel well where the scanner kinda of had trouble reaching deep inside of there. But this is where the rear left wheel would go, this is where the rear right wheel would go, and you can see my structural channels that are kind of running through here. This flat plane is the fuel tank itself. Now I'm calling these structural channels as opposed to frame rails because the car is actually a unibody design. SolidWorks has a feature called surface from mesh 
I'm actually able to select the mesh and then it'll generate a surface based on those based on that mesh and then from all of those surfaces that I recognize I'm able to build my reference geometry as far as planes and axes and things like that that help me locate it later on so the next step is a differential I treated it the same way as I did the rear of the car so I grabbed my reference geometry based off of surface recognition the third file is this vehicle suspension geometry template that I've created. I haven't really gotten started on the suspension geometry itself as far as dialing it in. This is just some nominal numbers I put in here to help me build this template. So it's a it can be considered a starting point, but really I haven't even gotten started past making the template itself. And finally, putting all those together, I've got the vehicle template which I'm going to highlight there, and I've got the rear scan of the vehicle and the differential scan. As you can see, using all that reference geometry, I was able to bring together the two scans and the file itself to show you exactly where these things are going to go when the car is positioned. And this gives me everything I need to be able to design a subframe that houses this diff and ties in this suspension geometry to this chassis. Okay, so that wraps up this video. Next up for the Rambler is some 3D scanning of the front for the engine swap that's got coming or that design for the rear subframe. I'll decide as I get there. And we've got plenty of other projects that are gonna be coming up as well. So we may not get to things back to back. If you liked what you saw today, feel free to like, subscribe. And as always, thanks for watching. And one more thing, I don't turn on the camera for everything, like removing the axle, removing the engine, stuff like that. But if you'd like to see more content coming from that kind of stuff, feel free to let me know in the comments and I'll see what I can do.